Question two, water leave the end of a hose pipe at point P with a horizontal velocity of 6.6 .6 meter per second. Point P is height H above the ground, okay. Water hits the ground at Q and the horizontal distance from P to Q is 3.5 mm. Uh, 3.5 meter, okay. No air resistance, yay. Assume the water between P and Q consists of non-interacting, such a strange term, non-interacting droplets of water and the only force acting on each droplet is the weight. Oh, sure. What is non-interacting droplets of water? Meaning water droplet number one and water droplet number two, they, are, they won't have surface tension. No surface tension between water droplets, water molecule. Because if you study chemistry, you know that water have hydrogen bond. And water's hydrogen bond is actually quite strong. So we are assuming that the water, the water's movement is only due to weight or gravity. Meaning, if let's say this is a water droplet here, the only force acting on the water droplet is mg. There is no, this water droplet slightly sticking to the other water droplet, they will just spray out. Okay, explain briefly why the horizontal component of velocity of the water droplets remains constant as it moves from P to Q. So if the velocity is constant, according to your Newton's second law, Newton's first law, it means that there is no force because force causes change in velocity. Ma. So I can say that the force on the droplet of water in the horizontal direction is zero. So remember, whenever there is a change in velocity, there is always a net force. Think of question one. In question one, your sphere drops at constant speed. No net force, they cancel out. And like in this case, you can even add the word net if you want. Net force on the droplet of water in the horizontal direction is zero. But the main idea here is the force on the droplet is zero. One mark. Okay, you can say no resultant horizontal force. All this is okay. All right, so try to stick to what they're saying. If they say horizontal component, you also talk about horizontal force in the horizontal direction. They say horizontal, we also say horizontal. All right, uh, there are other statements that can give you marks, but we are not sure about it, so this is still the safest one. All right, B. Show that the time taken for the drop, droplet to move from P to Q is 0 0.53 seconds. So what I'm looking for is actually the time taken for this droplet to drop from here to here. So I could do Stuva, but I'm going to do it in the horizontal direction first. So if I look at the horizontal direction, my Displacement is 3.5, looking for time, and my initial and final velocity is going to be 6.6. .6. Because of that, the acceleration is zero. So I can use S is UT, all right? So you can write the whole equation, UT plus half AT squared. This one becomes zero. So 3.5 is 6.6 .6 times T. So T would be 0 0.53 second. Okay. So the calculation, to get this mark, you must show the calculation, meaning I need to see at least something like this. Leading to the final answer. Okay, don't just, don't just write the middle line without the final line. Huh? They are both needed. So hence, it is proven or shown. Okay. And always leave your answer to 2 or more SF. All right, calculate the height H. 
To find height h, we're going to use Stuva again, but now we are going to use Stuva for the y component. Your object or the hose or the water droplet will leave the holes at 6.6 .6 meter per second. This is Vx. Is there any or Ux? Is there any vertical component? No one. It is fully and entirely horizontal. The water shoots out from the hose fully and entirely horizontal, which means this S, which is H by the way, because you know, water is going to go down like this, and here to here is H. Okay, so this one will be H. T is 0 0.53 because the water will travel from P to Q in 0 0.53 second. Initial speed is 0 because there is no vertical velocity. V, we don't know. What is acceleration? Since the only force acting on the water droplet is weight, so the only acceleration that is going down is g. So negative g. We can find h now. Use the equation with no v. S is ut plus half in t squared. H is 0 plus half negative 9.81 0 0.53 squared. All right, I normally stick to the amount of SF they give me. So from here, I'll have my H. Let me pull out my calculator. Mm, 9.81 times 0.53 squared divided by 2. So my answer is 13 point, I mean 1.37. which is 14, 1.4, sorry. Why do I keep saying 3? 1.4 Okay, so it's not that hard again. This is just a basic projectile question. So a few takeaway here is, when it comes to projectile motion, the for the X component, Actually, I'll just list down for you. In the template, right? I say you're talking about X and Y component. It's a refresh here. This is always zero. This is always negative 9.81. And they will share the same time. Because there's only one object. Okay, it can only be at one place at one time. So if it takes 0 0.53 seconds to travel from P to Q in the horizontal direction, so will it in the vertical direction, it will be the same. So this two is always fixed one when it comes to projectile. What may or may not be fixed is your UX. So for example, this one is horizontal, half parabola, horizontal. So if it's half parabola, then your UY is zero. Okay, if it's maximum height, then your Vy is zero. There's no maximum height asked in this question, so it's irrelevant. But this one is standard, and make sure that you know that, you know, when Sy is maximum height, Vy is zero. A few conditions here. Also, when the horizontal, the initial component is horizontal, initial velocity is horizontal, UY initial speed in the vertical direction is zero. No need to memorize one, it's quite logical if you understand the motion. If not, go and do a bit of revision yourself. Okay? So the two marks here, mm, one mark is when you use this line carefully, correct. Everything you hear, you substitute correctly in this line. Then the final mark is the answer, A1. Return to 2SF. Okay? Try not to use nine, uh, 10. Always use 9.81. No.
All right. That's it for this one. We're going to move on to part B. For the movement of a droplet of water from P to Q, okay, sure, state and explain whether the displacement of the water droplet is less than, more than, or same as the distance along the path. Wait a second. So we have P and Q here, and then we have the parabolic path. This is the distance along the path, let's say I call this B. And then if I want to look at displacement as this is my displacement, are they the same? No. Is there is something longer than the other one? Yep. D is longer. So displacement, remember, is always a straight line that connects the beginning, which is P, and the end, which is Q. Okay, so S is a straight line connecting P and Q. D is the actual places where the water has been. Okay, so they say less than, more than, or same as, so obviously the displacement S is less than D. So I can say displacement is the minimum distance from P to Q, but distance is the total path length of the droplets. Hence, minimum distance, displacement, is less than distance along the path. Part E, calculate the displacement. Well, I know H, right? It has dropped a distance of 1.4 meter. I know the horizontal distance traveled it was given to me in the question. There, 3.5 m. Mine is obviously not drawn to scale, but doesn't doesn't really matter. To find s, because this is our good old 90 degrees, we're going to use Pythagoras. Hence, displacement. Let's say let's say you say displacement s la. This is equal to square root of 1.4 square plus. 3.5 square. Okay, 1.4 plus 3.5. We'll square root this answer, and this will give you 3.769. So let's say I put 3.77, rounding to 3.8, this is 2SF again. 3.8. Alright, so if you use Pythagoras theorem, this is C1, and leading to your final answer, 3.8 is A1. So this one is a very standard projectile question. No hoops, no tricks. If you fill in your values correctly, if you know x and y have to divide and conquer, whatever that is in x will not go into the equation that has y, you are fine. For example, this is y component. And this calculation here is x component. All right. So this question in total is seven marks. Nice and easy.